Soldiers, I'm Daisy, founder of Banish. We hope that this movement has helped you feel confident about your skin with or without acne. Want a chance to change the world and be featured in our Banish Acne Diaries? Click on the link below to be featured in bad. Enjoy the rest of this video. My name is Megha Kamath. I'm 17 years old. My birthday is on May 8th. Well, this is random fact about me, but I actually don't have a favorite color. And I know that's so weird, but like all my life I've liked blue, but now I just can't tell. Like I like red, I like black. I was born in India and yes, I'm an Indian, but I was not raised here. So at the age of three, three and a half, I, I shifted from Hyderabad to Singapore. So I shifted there and I, I stayed there for about three to four years. Because of my dad's transfers, we shifted to Indonesia. And so Singapore and Indonesia, if you look on the map, it's about around the equator. So I like, there was never any winters, always summer, like all year round for everywhere in India, Indonesia, Singapore. So I stayed in Indonesia for another four to five years. And then I shifted back again to Singapore for another five years. So all in all, I've stayed in Singapore for around nine to 10 years. Hence why I don't sound like an Indian. I mean, my accent is just all over the place. So yeah, I guess that's it. So one of my hobbies would be painting. I, ever since I was around 10 years old, I would just draw landscapes and trees and all of that. And my mom, really thought that I could take this somewhere. So we like opted for a art class. So I did that for about two to three years in Singapore. I mean, it, it, I just felt like it was really monotonous and I was learning the same thing again and again. I quit and I just started painting, you know, by myself. I actually have a couple of these <laughs> down here. I'm not sure if I would want to show them just because, I mean, what may be like nice for me <laughs> may not be something that other people can appreciate, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, we will appreciate it. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay, one second. Okay, I have a bunch of random things. I feel like the main things that I like to do is landscapes. But recently, fun fact about me, I'm actually like a huge Doctor Who fan. <laughs> so I draw things like the TARDIS. I don't know if that's visible. And this is one of my favorite pieces, I guess. And yeah this as well <laughs> yeah and then just a bunch of random landscapes this is kind of simple i don't think it's finished yet and this is actually something my uncle gave me so i guess it's in the genes <laughs> okay so i first started getting acne around four years ago you know when puberty hits so around 12 13 i probably got my first pimple or two. I don't think I ever realized it, you know, like, oh, I have a pimple. I think everybody around that age, it's kind of just like sweat, not taking care of your skin. You're young. You don't really care. You don't know about what pimples and acne is. So I think it just came and it went away and it never really scarred my skin because obviously the younger you are, you know, the cells turn over. So it's, I never really had scars or anything. But then I, I'm, I used to be like really athletic. I loved playing football. I would run a lot. I was really into sports back then. Now it's like not as much, but yeah. So um, because of sports around 14, I, I was in a sports team, like not sports team. It was like our own school team, but we would go for a lot of matches. All the sweat and all that would just build up around my forehead. So my forehead was one of the worst parts of my skin. My cheeks were completely clear at that time but my forehead was just filled with like whiteheads, pustules, things that you don't want. And I don't think I was really educated on like skincare routines, what to do for your skin, what ingredients work and what don't. I think I was just using a lot of turmeric masks, like homemade remedies, things that weren't really proven to be beneficial. So it was just things that, oh, if I can apply this, maybe 30 minutes later, I'll clear skin. It was just, it was a gimmick. <laughs> so from 15 to 16, I probably had to mild to moderate acne. It wasn't that severe that I needed to go to a dermatologist ASAP, but it was concerning for me because I just felt like nobody else around me had acne and nobody could relate to me. So I kind of felt alone at that time. I was 16 when I shifted to India and December of last year is when I did something so bad to my skin, which I regret to this day, but um, oil cleansing. <laughs> That's just oil cleansing. I don't know what 
got into me i don't know how the internet convinced me but i went out and i bought all these oils like castor oil olive oil i did not use coconut oil because i knew that that was really going to it was comedogenic and i knew that my skin did not like coconut oil grape seed oil all of these different oils and i just made my own concoction and smeared it all over my face every night expecting like all the clogs to somehow get out of my skin and it was the complete opposite i clogged my skin more than to the gods okay i did not know what i was doing maybe i was doing something wrong but everyone is saying is the oil cleansing method is the best one for oily skin individuals and so i was really hoping that this was going to work for me but it did not i mean the one thing that i didn't check at that time was my diet and my diet was all over the place i wasn't eating as healthy as i am now like processed foods things i didn't really care about my diet the oil cleansing i definitely think that that was in my acne because it was really everywhere that i applied the oil i would get a breakout the next day or two so that in turn gave me a lot of scars hyperpigmentation it made my acne worse and i had to um at the beginning of january i went to a dermatologist on uh, my first out of 3 for this whole year <laughs> he put me on doxycycline for about 30 days i think that's the most common antibiotic that every person who has acne would be prescribed so i was on that it definitely cleared my acne for a while and along with uh, doxycycline i was put on a ayurvedic medicine and for people out there who might not know what it is it's just a herbal natural sort of supplement so to say indians are completely exposed to this kind of medicine because it's an indian practice and it's just everyone knows about this so um i was on doxycycline and the supplement after one month of the antibiotic was over i continued the supplement for about 5 months until may it's the supplement was mainly just fruit extract so either way if i wasn't getting that in my diet it would still benefit me so around may i completely went cold turkey i did not take anything orally and i was just maintaining my skin care routine which did manage to control my acne but um for about 4 months i just felt like i wasn't seeing anything i mean it was it was stagnant like my skin wasn't it was improving one day and then the next week it would just become worse or something so i went to another dermatologist on august 13 to be specific um because it was right about the time when i started my acne account and he prescribed me accutane and this is a big shocker to people but it was only for 10 days and <laughs> it's crazy because every other individual that i was like that i saw in the acne community if they were not on accutane it would be for at least 3 to 4 months or 5 months to only be prescribed for it for 10 days it just didn't make much sense to me i mean what my dermatologist told me was that i had a really bad cyst here and it came out of nowhere it was so big i think you can probably see the scar i'm not sure the lighting's just horrible but um i still have a huge scar there <laughs> so what he wanted to do accutane brings everything out of your skin right so you're going to have you might have a purge and that i definitely experienced that it got out the cyst and i was left with um so many more pustules and comedones and whiteheads that I, i i didn't even expect it and that kind of threw me off because he told me that i might have a little bit of he didn't say purging but he said if you get a few more break, like breakouts don't worry too much and then he gave me some clindamycin and niacin in my gel just to apply topically which helped i had so many more scars i wish i could show you i mean it's on my acne account but it was horrible and then out of nowhere he prescribed me like brimonidine gel and i have such bad things to say about this because first of all i don't have rosacea and i have hyperpigmentation which is nothing related to rosacea so he gave me something that i wasted my money on uh, i went to different dermatologists recently and he told me that was like one of the worst things not worst things but it was completely useless and he was also questioning what the other dermatologists prescribed me personally for me i just didn't think that this dermatologist really cared for my skin i mean he just thought as soon as i came down and sat he i was out the door with like another prescription and i didn't understand why i decided to go to a different dermatologist and i'm so happy that i did because the new one that i have now he's younger if someone's younger i feel like i could just relate to them more and they have more knowledge and more expertise personally in my opinion he even had a mic like a magnifying glass and he was looking at my skin up close <laughs> and i was like i was looking at my mom i'm like what is he doing <laughs> he could tell like it's mainly hyperpigmentation i hardly had any acne so to say it was more happy pigmentation than anything he put me on a topical and he told me to like continue the same face wash that i was given so he told me to control my diet so he said cut out carbs if you can cut out sugary foods and i had to take a bunch of blood tests and then uh, he prescribed me a, another antibiotic called azithromycin uh, 500 milligrams and i have to take that about 3 times a week 
once every day at the same time before lunch. He gave me an exanic cream and that's basically azelaic acid. And everybody knows, I think, azelaic acid is a really beneficial ingredient for treating hyperpigmentation. And I can vouch for that because I have seen results in two weeks. That's why I just feel like I believe and I trust my dermatologist more. So I feel like that in turn benefits my skin. When you believe in something, I truly feel like you can see the results. Yeah, that's about it for my acne journey, I guess. <laughs> Well, I would always sort of put my hand on my chin. I mean, everywhere. I would just do like this and I would be in class, not letting anybody look at my face. And if people were talking to me, I would avoid any eye contact. And just because I feel like when they would look at me, I could see their eyes sort of looking everywhere else and like mapping my skin and pointing out all, their, all my imperfections in front of me. And, and it's not just that, like it's not people looking at my skin. People would even comment on it. Like, Huh. Um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't cried on my skin in like such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need like a minute <laughs> here so I would have my friends who would sit next to me like comment on my acne or whenever they would talk about an obnoxious pimple that would come up, I would immediately hide my face because it's like, I just felt like they were pointing it out to me. It's like, oh my God, I have this one pimple on my skin. I don't know what to do. And then I felt like if I was going to give them advice, they would like look at me as if like, oh, you have so many pimples on your skin. Like, why would I take your advice? You know, there would be times when like, my, like teachers would come up to me. And um, there was one recent experience actually my French teacher, this was, I think, towards the end of my, like the 10 day thing that I had for Accutane. So my skin was purging, like anything. So that was the worst my skin had looked other than the time in December when I was oil cleansing and everything. And the fact that I had to like go to college every day with that skin. So it was, it was already hard as, as it was, you know, just walking into class and having people like look at my skin, like change from day to day, like progressively getting worse and worse. My French teacher, like after class, she asked me like, are you doing something for your skin? Like, she also has like a couple of spots. I was, I was kind of looking at her like, don't you understand? Like, you don't just go up to someone and ask them like, what's wrong with your skin? Like, are you doing something for it, you know? Yeah, so that kind of threw me off. I think that was only a month ago since I started my acne account. So it was <laughs> right after I started my acne account and I went through that, I just felt like it kind of pushed me two steps back. Like I was just starting to like be more positive and more like accepting my skin. And I just let this one comment get to me. It just kind of, I just felt so negative about my skin again. I didn't let that show, which is probably why I feel it now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't really post much about that on my acne account. I just wanted to just keep putting out, you know, my kind of skin out there and just getting as much exposure on that kind of skin as much as possible. Because in the acne community, especially for me, like what I've noticed is I haven't been able to see any Indian people out there. I don't want to make it like all sort of color based or skin color based and all that. But I just I wanted to see more Indians out there and I couldn't. So. I decided to like take my own initiative and put myself out there and see if I could get any other responses back, people relating to me, I can relate to someone else. You know, you go through all these experiences that might seem like a setback for you, but at the end of the day, you kind of realize that there's still a community out there that you just have to like meet and know about. It just makes you feel like you belong, you know? So I first found out about Banish probably two years ago when I was 15. I was doing a lot of research, so I was bound to 
like find stumble upon something. I actually was following Callie, my face stories. She was like one of the main reasons why I wanted to start my account. She's just so positive and lively and I just fed off of that. She was, you know, promoting Banish and I was like, oh, you know, Banish. And I, I started like seeing the hashtag going, going around. And there were all these other people like Emily and Grace. So I started seeing all these other people who were using Banish and I saw like results. I went to your website and I saw real results and authentic people. And it just, I mean, there was something about it, like the message that Banish is willing to embrace people who have insecurities, unlike other brands where they're just trying to profit off of people. I think I put this on uh, one of your lives, actually. Women and men now, we're never going to not want to be beautiful and never not want to be accepted. So all these beauty like companies, they profit off people's insecurities in general, and they don't give much importance to their con like customers itself. And I think Banish does like a wonderful job with that. And I love the message behind it. But like Daisy's story, actually, I think that really impacted me. And I just felt like it motivated me to know Banish more. And I love the team. I think Daisy has done a wonderful job with Banish for the past six years. I just think Banish all in all is a wonderful company. And I think I like that team as well. So. Well, obviously, <laughs> I was nervous about this. I mean, obviously not anymore, but I just felt like I went through a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, I was happy, I was on this high, and then I just got, you know, sad because of this interview. I mean, it's just, it sort of brings back emotions and everything that you felt while going through this journey. I think I felt everything in this little short amount of time. I'm so grateful and happy that I had this opportunity to be able to speak and share my side of things. Yeah, I'm just thankful that I got this opportunity to talk to you. Yeah. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel to be featured with any future Banish Acne Diaries and Skin Positivity comment. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.